Hey, hey everybody, this is Larry. This is day 9, 10, I don't know, whatever, of the Leaco Day Challenge. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord. Let me know what you think about today's forum. Today's forum, uh, I don't know. I don't know if you can hear me. I just finished running a half marathon, 13 miles along the water. As you can see, it's very pretty. Uh, the lighting here is good too, I don't know. Let me know if the camera's turning okay. Because I've been, uh, I don't know, using this camera and just playing it out. Um, yeah. All right, that's it. Let's go. <laughs> hey, hey, everybody. This is Larry. Um, yeah. Hope you enjoyed it. Well, oh, I'm so tired. I just went, ran 13 miles uh, and change, 21 kilometers or whatever it is, and I am tired. But uh, yeah, so I'm not, no, no, no chat. Let's just, uh, let's just do today's poll. We have 3147 ticking maximum energy from the mystic uh, dungeon. I don't know why we're doing so many magical things. Why? What are we doing? What are we doing here? I don't know. I'm, I'm not. Also, random note, I did wa finish watching Peacemaker Season 2. Let me know in the comments what you think. If you uh, if you caught up or if you're not, just leave a comment. But no spoilers, hopefully. Not for me. I saw it, but in general, uh, I am just tired. All right, let's go. Each magician has an attribute that gives you energy. Some magicians can give you negative energy, which means taking energy away from you. Your curse in such a way that after absorbing energy from Magician I, you will be instantly transported to I plus K. This process repeats until you reach the Magician where I plus K does not exist. In other words, you can choose a starting point and then teleport with K jumps until you reach the end of the Magician's sequence, absorbing all this energy along the way. You give it away energy and in K return the maximum possible energy you can gain. Know that when you reach it, you must take it from them, whether it is negative or not. Okay, so there's no choice. Um, the only choice is the starting point, right? And yeah, I mean, I think there are a couple of ways you can do this. You can do this. But the idea um, is, the main core idea is going to be dynamic programming or some variation of it. And honestly, this is probably easy to write. In theory, right? If you have some experiment with with dynamic programming, because um, and you even visualize it, but it's just you know it. Uh, and, you, and if you do a visualization, it probably helps you write it in a bottoms up way, and also in a reversal kind of way. If you kind of if you practice enough on these kind of things, then you're able to go, you know, you know which direction you're supposed to go. One thing I would say about this problem is that this is an example of something that is not symmetric, right? Uh, and what I mean by that is that a lot of times you you are able to get away with being sloppy, and I I'm saying this because that's something that I it took me years to realize what I was doing with dynamic programming because you know I well a lot of what I do is self learned so it's just that problems don't always come up and then and some dynamic programming problems I was just like oh I don't understand why I was um like you know what is wrong with you know how I was doing it and it took me a while to really figure it out. And this is one of those things, which is symmetry, right? And what I mean by that is that going from left to right is not the same as going right to left, which may be as obvious once you say it like that, right? But but if you write your recursion, etc., um, there's stuff that maybe implicitly you don't know if you're going from left to right or right to left. If you go with top down, bottoms up, um, and you just have to be really careful, right? And if you don't do it in the right way, certain, certain functions will look a little bit messy and just, well, you know, you're going to have a bad time, right? Um, that's basically the idea, um, but this one I don't think it's too bad. Um, you just, I'm, I've been naming everything F for like a function. I don't know if it's good or not. I'm not gonna go with the the basics of dynamic program today because I just ran a half marathon, 13 miles. All right, so, <laughs> but, uh, you know, <laughs> so yeah. But basically here, if it, it's over, if it it's over, then we just return zero. And this is pretty straightforward, right? You have to take. There's no, there is no no tick, right? There's no no tick, huh, double negative. There's no question mark, right? So then it's just equal to return energy of index plus um, plus f of index plus k, and that's it, right? And once you kind of realize when you write this out, you you, know, you can realize that you can actually do this bottoms up with a for loop. And I urge that, you know, this is a tail recursion also, right? I, so you should be able to do it, right? Uh, practice if you have to. 
um, you know, I, I know how to do it, just to be clear. Uh, I'm just trying to, you know, go through some teaching things. Um, but I would also say that, uh, you know, one another thing to notice is that this is a tail recursion. So, you know, there's stuff you can do with that as well. Um, but do, so then your, your question may be, well, then why do you use dynamic programming then? Well, I mean, it depends how you want to write it. Of course, you can go, as I said, you can go backwards and accumulate things and that will probably be fine. The way that I like to, uh, the, I, the way that I wanted to do it for this problem, um, do you have to choose a starting point? Okay. If that's the case, then we choose um, negative infinity, right? Yeah, so so the reason why I want to do it so I could do something like this. Pretty straightforward. Best is equal to max best f of i. And that's it. Right? F of i, f f uh f of index gives us the suffix of the sum of all the energies, right? So that's basically the idea. Um, yeah, looks okay. Let's go quick submit. Why does it take so long? Hmm. Maybe I'm wrong. I mean, this definitely, it's a little bit slower because, you know, I I, I intentionally did it uh, top down just to kind of show you how easy it is. I mean, but... Honestly, you can do this with a, a for loop, definitely upsolve it, and you'll probably have a way better t um, one time, right? But the complexity is the same, right? Uh, being that index can be 0 to n, of course, and each of these just has one core, so it's all of one. So yeah, so this is going to be linear time, linear space, and we're pretty happy. Uh, one thing I would say is if you do do it backwards, you can actually do it with constant space if you're careful and stuff like that. Um, yeah. That's it. Uh, that's all I have for this one. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. Uh, let me know if you have questions. Because uh, I am just tired to think today. So let's just leave it at that. Let's keep the video short. Thanks for watching. Stay good. Stay healthy. Do good mental health. I'll see y'all later. Take care. Bye-bye.